to me, what's what's more powerful than the idea of sustainability is true accountability. It's not enough just to do some good. It's not enough to do a little less bad. We actually all have to be doing more good than bad to move the needle in the right direction. We're so excited today to be talking with Eric Dayton, who owns a hospitality company in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which encompasses both a clothing brand as well as a renowned restaurant. And in a time when the hospitality industry has been so hard hit, uh, you, instead of moving to the takeout model for your restaurant, actually partnered with Second Harvest Heartland, uh, which is one of the nation's leading uh, hunger relief organizations. Yeah, you know, I, this actually was really led by our executive chef, Jonathan Gans. Our chef's instinct was just to find a way to continue doing what he loves and, and really, I think, for the whole industry to continue to do what it's best at, which is serving others. And came together with Second Heartland and said, you know, we've got now workers who are, who are out of work. We've got kitchens that are sitting uh, empty and unused. What if we pooled our resources and started to you know, create prepared meals for families at a time when that would really be very, you know, helpful and valuable to them. And now we're up to three central kitchen locations uh, and are producing about 30,000 meals a week and have put over 100 hospitality workers back to work doing what they're best at, which is cooking great food and, and serving the community. I just think it's such a creative way to help other people still work through this and feel like they're contributing to helping others. Now you're having corporate partners come in, right, and donate employee kitchens, uh, food supplies, uh, workers that they had in their cafeterias to really expand the, the reach. That's right. Our second central kitchen is actually out of United Health's uh, office facilities, their, their Optum uh, headquarters. Uh, to see the bigger companies in town step up and support it and put their weight behind it has been really exciting and, and obviously allows us to take it to a whole other level. It took the nimbleness of the entrepreneurial community to kind of first think of this idea and start to show how it could work. And then you can help these larger companies use these dollars that they wanted to contribute to helping other people. But now you're giving them something to plug into and make that much more impactful that much faster. It's so big, right? The, the, the need is so great. It does inspire creative thinking of, okay, how can we pull together the greatest amount of resources to, to fuel an idea, if it's a proven one, um, to to meet the, the scale of the challenge because it, it does feel so overwhelming. It's allowed things to move faster than I think it otherwise would, especially working with big companies. And there's also just a, a real lack of ego. This isn't about who can get credit for what and who can um, you know, get recognition. It's just, okay, how do we help? Which maybe isn't too unusual for Minnesota, but um, it's sort of um, you know, that, that, that good Minnesota instinct uh, magnified further. But I love that everyone's instinct has been generosity and, and trying to play the right role and help where they can. Originally, Minnesota Central Kitchen was, was relying on volunteers, and it was incredible to see all of these chefs and cooks who were newly out of work stepping up to volunteer their time and their talent. They, they, were, they were willing to do it for, for nothing. And so we began a fundraising effort called Northern Hospitality. It started with just the selling of some T-shirts, uh, but quickly grew through individual and then eventually corporate donations. Um, and so, you know, that was that was the way that ASCO could could be part of this and contribute. And um, it's been fun to see people wearing their T-shirts with with pride, you know, posting pictures from home. Um, we set up a, a, a little digital tip jar on the site next to the T-shirt sales. If you wanted to contribute more, you could. And again, 100 percent goes to Second Harvest Heartland. And we had people buying a twenty five dollar T-shirt and then leaving a hundred dollar tip. So people, uh, if you give them the opportunity to, you know, to feel like they're just doing some good and being being part of helping. How did you, I'm just curious, how did the, the apparel business and then the hospitality business are not necessarily two things that I would think of as, as living under the same parent company. Really what holds the company together now, in addition to continued, you know, focus on, on service. And so there's a lot of, a lot of shared ethos uh, is really being rooted in a sense of place. And, and so the way we think about our restaurant is we, we think of it as a northern restaurant. What is the food of this region? What is the food of our, of our state and the surrounding area? Um, and really the same with, with our apparel company. You know, we make outdoor winter clothing. This is a place that's known for its winters, uh, but that doesn't stop us from getting outside year-round in Minnesota. And so we wanted to make sure that people had really good gear to do that. And then also uh, the mission of Asco Finlayson is the way we call it uh, or describe it is to keep the North cold 
And so we tie what we do uh, in terms of the manufacturing of our apparel and also our business model supports organizations on the leading edge of, of solving the climate crisis. And then you can see that that ties back to the restaurant with some of how we source. So uh, it may appear like sort of a, a disparate collection from the outside, but you know, from the inside, it, it feels very, uh, very connected and very, very much uh, shared in its its mission. You know, when when there's a a major immediate disaster, we always see this outpouring of support. How do you balance this immediate acute need with keeping your eye on what is a longer term but very existential uh, problem that we need to solve? Yeah, this is something I've been thinking a lot about recently that our team has been thinking a lot about recently. You know, we're we're still on the clock for climate change. We're, we're in the last decade that we have to act and to really change the trajectory that we're on when it comes to the climate crisis. And so that doesn't pause for us to deal with, with COVID-19. But on the bright side, if there is a, a silver lining to all this, I, I hope that we are proving to ourselves that we have the ability to mobilize on a global scale to solve really big, hard problems. But I, I do think that that you know when we do and we will get past COVID-19, we've got to think similarly um, big and boldly when it comes to climate. So you, you've done such an incredible job advocating around climate change and committing your entire company to, to giving back 110% through being sustainable at every single stage of production. Um, how, do you, how have you balanced that from a marketing perspective and a messaging perspective where when you're trying to kind of advocate for a certain kind of behavior and lead by example, and then demonstrate that through your product, how have you kind of drawn that line? I guess I would say this is one of the really important differences between what it's taking to respond to COVID now and what, what I think the response to climate can be. This is requiring, obviously, great business sacrifice and, and personal sacrifice. Um, you know, you, you have businesses that are shut down for a period of time. I mean, there, there's no way to spin that as a positive thing. That, that's, that's real pain, uh, economic pain. I think actually in climate, there's a great deal of, of business opportunity. And so I think in, in the case of um, responding to the climate crisis, companies can both do well and do good. So for us, we set out to prove that, that this business model, that the model of taking true corporate uh, accountability for, for climate uh, and carbon, that that could be sustainable, that that could work as a for-profit business. And, and we're, we're showing that it, that it can. And it, and it works for us as a business. And so to me, what's, what's more powerful than the issue than the idea of sustainability is true accountability. It's not enough just to do some good. It's not enough to do a little less bad. We actually all have to be doing more good than bad to move the needle in the right direction. Now I think it's actually riskier for a company not to be engaging on climate and, and not to be showing leadership on this issue because I think increasingly customers are going to expect it and, and hopefully demand it. Kind of transitioning back to the immediate and one of the things that we want to do as, as we make these episodes is to tell people what you're doing and also encourage people to support it. Um, so how can folks give and what will they be giving to? So if people go to twoharvest.org, the number twoharvest.org, and then slash Northern Hospitality, they can learn more about this initiative to, to put cooks back to work, uh, serving meals for families in need. And you know, their contributions will go to those wages to, to helping to, to employ furloughed hospitality workers to do what they do best, which is serving others. Well, Eric, you're, you're an inspiration as well as your entire team and everyone that you have brought together to make all of this possible. I'm proud to be a fellow Minnesotan with you. And I think this generosity is what we expect of this area. And, and we hope that as people watch this episode, it inspires them to try and figure out what they can do within their community. I appreciate that. I appreciate your support. And, and I do think, you know, in a situation like this that can feel kind of um, overwhelming and, and a little bit hopeless, you know, even just finding a small way to contribute um, and, and, and pitch into the greater effort uh, certainly has felt really good for uh, me and my team. We're all in this together and we'll, we'll all hopefully get through it together. Check out the donation link in this post and join Deluxe and Flow Studios in helping Asco Finlayson put cooks back to work, creating meals for the food insecure community. And go to askofinlayson.com to pick up a Northern Hospitality t-shirt with 100% of the proceeds going to the cause. We'll be continuing to interview small business owners who are stepping up for their communities. So check back at deluxe.com slash big heart for more incredible stories. Or send us a story from your hometown. Hashtag small business big heart.